Americans don't know what a blue ocean is. So I drove my Korean friend to Los Angeles airport from San Diego, which is quite a long drive. So it was like a three or four hour drive. And um, we were in there shooting the shit, just talking about whatever nonsense we were talking about. And he all of a sudden said to me, blah, 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 is a blue ocean, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, wait, wait, wait a second. What did you say? He said, blah, blah, is a blue ocean, blah, blah, blah. And I thought, ah, something's wrong with his English. Um, this is a really weird context to use the word blue ocean. I thought he must be referring to the Pacific Ocean, which was right next to us at the time. And he was shocked because I apparently didn't know the meaning of blue ocean that he was using, which to him is very confusing because I'm the native speaker and he's not. And he's like, you know, he explained to me what a blue ocean is, which is a market where there's a lot of opportunities for entrepreneurs to come in and make some money. It's a um, kind of an untapped market is what you might call it. And, you know, I had no idea what this is. So there's some book called Blue Ocean Strategy or Blue Ocean something like that. And I guess the author is a Korean guy, a Korean professor who lives in France. And he wrote this book and it's some mega bestseller. And I think this term blue ocean is now just a part of Korean vernacular. Um, Korean people use it freely and they don't have to explain what it is to each other. Korean people just say, Blah, blah, blah is a blue ocean and everyone understands it. Whereas Americans don't. We've never heard this term before. Um, it's very uncommon to us. I'm sure the book sold at least relatively well in America, but it's not just a common term you can throw around. And I think the reason why this book was not as popular and why this term didn't catch on the same way as it did in Korea is that following a blue ocean, finding a blue ocean and entering it, that's just what you do when you start a new business. That's just what you do when you do a new venture. Um, like to me, the idea of, of seeing something successful and trying to copy it, that's, that's risky and scary. And I don't know I could do it. And I think in this way, American entrepreneurs and Korean entrepreneurs are quite opposite. There's another term, which is uh, a red ocean, uh, a, a marketplace that's crowded, that it's already saturated, that there's already enough entrepreneurs trying at that market that it's not uh, I, I mean, I guess for some people it's worth going into, but it means that there's already enough people serving the customers in that market. And I think, strangely enough to me, Korean people actually like a red ocean, which is very strange to me. I mean, I've had friends who talk about they want to someday open a cafe in Seoul. What? To, to an American uh, who knows a lot about Korea, knows that there's cafes fucking everywhere. This is the dumbest fucking idea I've ever heard in my life. For one, Starbucks is already beating the shit out of everyone. Two, there's already a bunch of other Korean chains like Tucson Place and, I don't know, Angelus in Us Coffee. Uh, uh, what's the, there's, you know, there's a bunch of cafes. And then there's like uh, Dongri cafes, independent cafes. Like, there's enough cafes in Seoul. That's the reddest fucking ocean you could think of. But I think in the Korean person's mind, um, you know, that's a really good idea because look, other people have made money doing it, so so can I. So I think in one way, Korean people see it as uh, it's, it's kind of a safe thing to do because somebody else has done it before me, so that must mean there is a possibility that I can do it successfully. And I also think it comes down to the fact that Korean people Think of success as something you can mimic. Think of success as something you can find someone who's successful, do what they do, and then get the same success as them. And it kind of works pretty well in certain areas, maybe like in, in education. If you, um, if you hire a tutor who went to Seoul Day or Yonsei or Koryo Day and they tutor you and you go like, how the fuck did you get into that university? And they go, I did X, Y, and Z. You should also do X, Y, Z. And you copy them. They might give you some insight and some and some good ways to get into that university. And for Korean people, I think copying success is is one of the safest ways to do it. And they love the way that 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 copying success works out because it, when you copy someone else who's successful, the way you have to compete with them is 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 by doing exactly what they do and just doing it harder. Korean culture loves this competition of that dude's successful, he's working 10 hours a day, well, I'm gonna compete against him and then I'm gonna work 12 hours a day and I'm gonna make my prices cheaper and I'm gonna make my cafe even more beautiful. I'm gonna remodel it so it's, my cafe is prettier and uh, my prices are lower and uh, we have more kinds of desserts to give out and then I will trounce them and I will beat the other cafe owners. That's what I'm gonna do. And this very direct competition is something Korean people are, are 
think of as a very good way to get success. Now, on the flip side, when an American looks at a red ocean, it's scary. There's no opportunities there. For one thing, you do have to compete super hard, and an American looks at it and goes like, how the fuck am I gonna compete in this red ocean? There's other people who have already been there for one, two, 10 years, right? And they're already good at it. It's not that they're lazy and that's how they got to the top. They got to the top because they were also hardworking. How the hell am I supposed to work harder than them? And not only, let's say I work two hours more a week or whatever it is, I, I beat them in some area. He's got the, the experience and he's also taken on other comers who have tried to topple him in whatever business venture it is, whether it be a cafe or hurai chicken or samgyeopsal or whatever thing that there's already too many of. When I see that red ocean, I think, fuck that. I can't compete with that motherfucker. I need to think of something new so I could jump in and, and not have any competition and be the first one to do it. And to us, that blue ocean is, it looks very, um, looks very tempting. Now, the downside of blue oceans is nobody's succeeded in them before. I mean, if it's a real, real blue ocean, nobody else is succeeding in it, you don't know if that's gonna work or not. And you might put all this effort and all this time into it and it'll just be turned out that nobody wanted that thing you were trying to make or you're trying to sell. The example I think of, to me, this is a blue ocean because I'm, I think most entrepreneurs in America, the general entrepreneur idea in America is there's some product you want. There's some product your friend wants. There's some product that a group of people want that nobody has made yet. And you think, hey, I'll be that guy. I'll tell you right now, I've searched for as much as I could. I'm really trying to find a book on modern history in South Korea. There are a bunch of books about the Korean War and North Korea and all this garbage. I'm really interested in the history of, of South Korea from after the Korean War until the present time. It's a very, to me, very interesting topic. Crazy quickly changing culture, crazy quickly changing politics, crazy quickly changing um, economy. And there, I can't find a book about that in English. So that's a very, very blue ocean. So there's a lot of opportunities for someone to go in and write that book. But on the downside, what if just nobody wants that book? What if only a thousand people want that book and you end up you know, writing books not an easy thing to do? My idea is you would make this book by following each uh, president. There hasn't been that many Korean presidents yet. So you can kind of follow each one, break it up in chapters that way. And, um, you know, make a kind of fun, cool modern history of Korea. Because I think Korea, South Korea has a very interesting modern history. Now, if you make that book, there's a good chance it's not going to work. So maybe it's not the best idea in the world, but the point is at least it's a blue ocean. I don't think I'm going to write that book, but I see it as a viable option for me to jump into and actually make some money in. And uh, to me, the idea of a red ocean is, is, is not even a, a possibility. It's, it's a foregone conclusion. I'm not even going to try that because people who have more experience are going to defeat me or I'm going to have to work super hard that, um, you know, I, it's basically other people are already going to defeat me because they're already in the market and they already know how it works, right? Whereas the blue ocean, even if it's not super popular and even if it doesn't work out in the end because if it were a, a desired item, it would already be made. At least the blue ocean to me has some kind of chance. And I think that's the real mentality that most, if not all, American entrepreneurs think, which is I need to go into a market where there's nobody else. I need to go into the market where I'm the first person so I don't have to compete and I have a better chance of succeeding. So for us, the term blue ocean doesn't make any sense because that term just means starting a business. So if you like my video, give it a thumbs up. If you hate my video, give it a thumbs down. If you love me or hate me, hit the subscribe button. Um, please leave comments. Uh, maybe you yourself are a Korean entrepreneur. Maybe you're a Korean entrepreneur in America who did jump into a red ocean, beat the shit out of us, uh, um, you know, Native Americans. That's not the right word to use, but people who were born in America. Or, you know, maybe you have some really good take on this. You work uh, for a Korean company or American company, whatever it is. Leave, them, leave your comments in the comments below and let me and everyone else who watches the video know what's up. Remember, these videos come out every Friday at 7 p.m. So if it's after 7 p.m. and it's a Friday, you should check out my new video. And of course, remember the most important thing of all. Have a super most awesome day. Changhua and Kim Yuri, I have to make this video. You can make this video. You can make this video.